Good day, everybody. It's been a little while since I've taken time to do a recording for you all, and I actually want to talk about a concept called interdependence today. Now, when it comes to this particular concept, there are four levels of dependence, okay? First, we have codependent. So these people are the ones that can literally not function without somebody else by their side. Um, they need that consistent confirmation from the person that's next to them. Next, we have dependent. So this is the person who still looks to other people for their own justification. So they tend to come more from a, I'm not getting what I want, and it's your fault. <laughs> the next one we have is independent. Now, this is where a lot of us get to in our lives, and we actually glorify independence. Now, there's something to be said about being self-sufficient. Um, we even take a look at women now who have their own business, who you know raise their children, and basically run things all by themselves. And and we look at her and we say that's empowerment. You know, she's totally independent, and that's great to a certain extent. But when we start to realize that she probably didn't get to where she is all by herself, we realize that there have been a lot of other acts or contributions in her world where other people have stepped forward and helped her or given her something. So I want to take it to the next level, and I want to discuss interdependence. Okay. So before we do that, let's break down the concept of independence, okay? So independence is actually a win-lose mind frame. Interdependence is known as win-win. So the psychology of win-lose mentality is actually natural. Win-win is not. Win-lose is to look out for number one. Win-lose is to win by intimidation. Win-lose tries to have it all. And win-lose is primarily focused on success. See, people fear winning because they believe that to get to the top might take too much time and effort. People also think that winning also constitutes just getting through the work week, taking a paycheck after the government has taken its cut, and the bills are paid in order to enjoy the weekend and escape the rest of their lives. We tell ourselves that this is power-based, but underneath it all, it's really just survivalist thinking and we use it to compete and compare. Now don't get me wrong, competition has its place for free enterprise and for democracy to take root. It also helps us sort out, you know, who's good at something and maybe who needs to work on, you know, a specific service or skills in order to bring it up to par. But we tend to do this at the expense of the other guy. This is how we primarily develop an immediate sense of self-gratification that can only be addressed by an adequate amount of accomplishment. We know that pleasure is an absence of pain, and the real culprits here are the drives for status and power. Runner-ups and second-placers are always forgotten. We know this. It's this kind of mentality that warps winning. It's the whole you gotta push, grunt, groan your way to the top. It also tends to develop narcissistic, self-indulgent attitudes, and we become hooked on power. It's actually important to know that selfishness is a natural reflex. It allows us to demonstrate what we want and what's important to us, but there's a rational way to go about it, and there's an irrational way to go about it. The irrational way forcibly interferes with the rights of others. We benefit when we develop consideration for others. It is also important to understand that we are not born with the capacity to love others. It is something we are taught. It might be interesting to think that babies are actually the very definition of narcissistic. Narcissism and the capacity to love are directly linked. As one increases, the other decreases. So, win-win is if I help you win, I win too. And this cannot be practiced in isolation. We need others. Win-lose, again, is independence. Win-win is interdependence. There's something to, to be said for the whole idea of you know, being all that you can be. Right? This includes the value of you as a whole person, spirit, body, and mind. This also embraces the belief in individual freedom and merit and the consciousness of individual and collective responsibilities to one another. 
So there are four kinds of people that come to life's big game. First one is the spectator. The vast majority of people who prefer to watch from the sidelines, that's a spectator. They avoid the arena for fear of being rejected, hurt, or defeated, and losing isn't the general or main fear. They can often rationalize it by saying things like, oh, it's not meant to be. Even the possibility of winning carries a burden as they see it as hard to set a good example. People might hold them accountable and see. Next, we have the losers. These are the people who actually choose to lose. These people would rather look like, dress like, have fun like, earn like, have houses like, or be like somebody else. These people also criticize and envy others. And they also tend to put themselves down. The next one is the one-way winners. These ones are often concerned with victory by way of demonstrating intimidation and defeating others. They are your quid pro quo types. They build and expect recognition for it. They are closed off to opportunities and the ideas of others. There's an intellectual cynicism, indifference, and or apathy. It can include prejudice, aloofness, and when it totally goes to see, vulgarity and rudeness. And the last one is the double winners. These ones see success as a two-way street. It is the path of pursuit of individual excellence, which involves neither luck, astrological forecasts, or being beautiful, thin, rich, or powerful. It is getting and giving in an atmosphere of love, cooperation, social concern, and responsibility. To win over others, we must have determination, goals, dogged persistence, and an incurable optimism that will prevail in spite of all odds. To win with others, we need all of that and an ability to demonstrate a healthy balance of those traits. We can actually even add on or tack on a couple of more principles to the double winner types. Okay? These people enjoy the game. If you're not enjoying the game, you're not using your talents properly, or you're not expressing them properly, or you're not even in the correct place to begin with. <laughs> Learn what you're good at and make a daily habit out of it and pursue it with gusto. Enjoy your living seven days out of the week. Next one is have a purpose beyond yourself. Man, I love it when I talk to people and they share with me what their values are and they describe it as the legacy that they would choose to leave behind. Oh, I get goosebumps every time I hear it. We are goal seeking by design. Random thinking or being fixed on unrealistic ideas lend to wandering aimlessly until we wear ourselves out or we self-destruct. Now, I don't know if anybody has read the book called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, but the book is actually all about um, the human spirit and how adversity is actually really important to it. And so it describes the prisoners of war and how the captors actually dealt with them when, um, when they were splitting them up. So the captors actually identified which of the prisoners seemed like they had a purpose or reason for living, and they separated them from everybody else. They treated those particular prisoners worse than they treated everybody else, but the most amazing part was that those that had a purpose or reason for living still fared better and were more likely to survive than the others. So even the captors could realize that these people had an effect on the masses. And then people kind of wonder why it is I do what I do <laughs> and why it is that I encourage everybody to kind of be their own champion, right? It makes sense when you begin to realize that who you are and how you choose to present yourself has an effect on everybody. So in that way, it's already kind of a win-win. Take some time to assess what you mean when you say winning. 
Victory isn't gained at the expense of anyone else, and not every victory means that someone else is defeated. Winning is taking the talent or potential you were born with and have since developed and using it fully toward a goal or purpose that makes you happy and serves a purpose for other people. Happiness itself is not a goal. It just happens as a side effect. So losers say, there's no way I can win. Winners say, I'll do everything I can to win. And double winners say, if you win, I win too. So let's have a look at the profile of somebody who has an interdependent mind frame. So the first is that they do not actually seek publicity for their acts. They don't care. They don't need any recognition for it. Next one is it understands that good news is not the favorite grist of the media grill or mill, sorry. <laughs> Everywhere we look, we know that a lot of our media is more into sensationalism than anything. Um, and sometimes they are struggling to even report, even in you know small cities like Medicine Hat, Alberta. Um, I even saw one earlier today where I don't think the news was actually really good. And I'm not entirely sure that the majority of people actually read the article. Right. People also know that the win-wins are actually small. They're everyday encounters, and they affect the lives of usually only a few people, even though that effect can be really profound. We all have that kind of potential. In our world, we are prisoners of war of a different kind. We are prisoners of work, prisoners of wishes, prisoners of our world. When we give ourselves a specific set of instructions, and it's the reason why people do not survive on their, in their own POWs is because they haven't thought out or defined it for themselves. When we know what we're doing, and we know how to plan it along the way, and we know how our plan will benefit others, we start to live on purpose. And we can even go one step further we can begin to explore the vital feelings, the vibrant feelings of our goal. And that's how we get a purpose to live beyond us, right? Interdependent people also earn the respect of others, and they give a hand to those who are reaching, groping, or even trying to hang on. Earn thy neighbor's love to gain acceptance, aim for the respect from others, to get it, give it, the more you have, the safer and more confident you will feel. Help others get what they want, have an answer, and don't be afraid to give it. Offer insights to those who might never otherwise feel the thrill of accomplishment. Any words of wisdom that I give out when I'm talking to people, I own as my own. I do not... I, I'm able to point out, you know, maybe what piece of literature I got it from um, or what class I maybe learned it from. But these are the things that I speak about and these are the things that I take and I live. So when I offer them to somebody else, I do so knowing fully well through my own experience, whether it be myself or working with other people, that the insight I have to give is something that's really valuable. Interdependent people practice synergism. So entropy occurs when things wear out from use. Atrophy occurs when things wither away from lack of use. And synergism occurs when things work better as they are used. So this whole principle is based on the idea that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So, for example, a corporation that offers ownership in stocks rather than salary incentives is a really great one. Right? Interdependent people communicate. It's the whole idea, I think it was Earl Nightingale who said, I'll make them glad that they talk to me. Listening to what others have to say is so important. It offers them value by hearing them. And master communicators believe this to be the greatest skill of all. I'll make them glad they talk to me. It's an attitude that's service-oriented, not self-oriented. The 
concern becomes for the other person and people can sense that. When we are aware and encourage someone else's unique potential, people can tell. Get personal. Hear their problems, interests, and be willing to offer something. Okay? Interdependent people don't trumpet their status. There's no need to show off. There's a strong relationship between win-lose attitude, showing off, and materialism. We think that displaying such things conveys a successful image, but it actually denotes a lack in self-esteem. A person with a strong self-respect can project a modest image. Double winners may not always be able to buy expensive things, but they always do the best with the things they can afford. When we let our actions, not our possessions, do the talking, it becomes the real thing. And we don't have to flaunt an expensive imitation. Okay? Interdependent people also never lose. They even win while they lose. Knowing that you can learn from failures and mistakes rather than your victories. Failures are often jump off points for future successes. The only difference between stumbling blocks and stepping stones are the way you use them. We can go about this in a way so that we're not kidding ourselves. This kind of attitude allows us to think of ourselves as a winner all the time while giving ourselves the room to grow. When we learn something from every experience and make it motivation, it becomes proof that we can use it for something good. Interdependent people also understand the idea of using the spiritual dimension. Now, well, let's notice that I'm not saying that this is the entire picture. This is just a part, okay? And it is a really important part. When I talk about the spiritual dimension, I talk about being aware of yourself intimately. Be aware of time and opportunities to learn from the past, plan for the future, and live as fully as you can in the moment. Develop a practice that allows you to do so wherever you go. Having a faith or set of beliefs to find ultimate comfort in is important, even in health. For example, a patient will tend to be treated more successfully if they believe in trust in a particular cure. A drug that is also given by an enthusiastic doctor is often far more potent than one given by a skeptical doctor. So this is the placebo versus the nocebo effect. A person can get better by calling on their spiritual beliefs. In 25% of ailments, drugs are effective, but in the other 75%, a person's beliefs can play a powerful role. And the last part of this is add your own. Right? So when we're owning our individuality and who we are as a person, put in the ones that you think are really, really important. So losers seek attention. Winners seek admiration. Double winners earn respect. Now, when it comes to the interdependent mind frame, being a double winner, the basis for all of this is, of course, self-esteem. This is essential. Why? because it takes a little bit of time and effort to overcome the win-lose mentality. Remember, win-lose philosophy is actually natural. Win-lose philosophy is dominant and addicting. And win-lose is habit-forming. While interdependence requires self-examination, understanding, self-discipline, and maturity. You know, adolescence is where we attempt to maintain dependence while demanding to do things on our own terms. <laughs> this is the start of the preoccupation with the immediate self in our senses. A child's rationale is, if it feels good, do it. Adolescents take it one step further by doing what feels good so long as they aren't hurting anyone else. And this rationale is held by many adults who maintain their win-lose attitude by doing what comes naturally. Natural isn't always healthy. And there's some evidence of that in the win-lose attitudes. So we tend to only care about others to the extent of what they can provide us with, and that usually includes self-gratification. So what do they do for me? 
two is comparison, which is the uh, culprit of the inner loser. Three is withdraw and review all relationships as threatening. <laughs> Four, we try to attack and prove them, uh, prove them wrong, not only to them, but also to the world. And five is they grow arrogant and callous, trying to hide their lack of self-confidence behind a mask of conceit and self-assurance. Sounds a little bit harsh, I know, but that's actually what self-examination really requires you to do. So it's important for us to remember that unless you have internal values, you have nothing of value to give to others. Lacking from internal values, you actually need to take from others. Okay? Now, I know what you're thinking when it comes to this whole idea of getting to know yourself intimately. It's going to pull you a little bit outside your comfort zone. This is true. Perception is colored by our past experiences and our pieces of input. This quite often does not actually equal reality. Each link we add to this growing chain either strengthens our lives or shackles it more tightly. We have that control. So set new limits. Do something different. Comfort zones dictate the amount of discomfort we are willing to endure before making adjustments. You know, actually too much can motivate just as much as too little. On a physiological level, there are many feedback systems that kick into gear when we leave the comfort zone. Okay. Uh, a great example of this would be the reticular activating system, which is a part of the brainstem. When you wake up in the morning and you go to put on a piece of underwear, you can actually feel it. You feel the sensation, right? Within a few minutes, you actually completely forget that it's there. Now, when we're adopting new habits into our lives, it can, it can be, we can be just as aware of the new way as putting on a new piece, piece of clothing in the morning, right? Now, when we put on our clothes in the morning, it only takes a few minutes and we go about our day. We actually know that that's normal, okay? Now, if we're going to change a habit, it actually sensitizes us to a new way of being. And self-esteem becomes really, really important when actually practicing these particular traits and these new habits. There's no way that we can continue on and put ourselves out there in, a, in the world. Because like I said, we can't do this. We can't practice interdependence all by ourselves. We need others. We need to be able to maintain our own sense of personal integrity. And this is something that I work through with a lot of clients all the time. Um, and it's one of the reasons why they stick with me for at least a good month. Um, and they usually come every few days so that we can maintain focus and we can work on building up their self-esteem. I absolutely love and adore seeing people walk out into their lives and creating relationships, not just romantic ones, but relationships with their children, relationships with their coworkers, employees, uh, friends, family, and they manage to do it in such a way that they can actually begin to find peace. And the most amazing part is they adopt new traits that seems to actually have everybody else sitting up and taking notice. Um, that's the important part. So above all, don't forget the win-lose mentality. That's a natural thing for us to do. But in order to take your life to the next level, we need to be win-win.